Up ahead, we have a tavern. Taverns are places where you can hire crew, pay for secret information about valuable convoys, you can play mini games, and of course, you can have a drink. To gain access to all of this, you need to prove yourself with your fists. Now that the fight is over, you have access to the tavern and its services. This being a tavern, there's always plenty of rum to be drank. But drinking too much will have some fun surprises for you. But here, since we've survived the storm, did pretty well, let's order our crew to sing. Sea shanties are a part of this game. It's a collectible that you can find in the world. So the more you find, the bigger playlist you have for your crew. Here we've crossed into a harpooning zone. The harpooning system is connected to the hunting system, which is used for upgrading Edward himself. So you can upgrade the number of weapons he carries, the ammo that you can carry, and even his health. But for now, we've moved past that zone and we've got into a storm. Storms are very dangerous. If you're not careful, if you don't know how to navigate a storm, you will take damage to your ship and you will lose crew members. In the distance, we can see a water spout. This is a tornado in the ocean. These are very dangerous, they can suck you in, and when they do, they tear the ship apart and uh, take out your crew. Here we can see its effect on a ship. This poor ship got sucked in and got destroyed. Storms are very dangerous, but we wanted the player to take advantage of this. When you've mastered a storm, when you know how these systems work, you can pull enemies into a storm and let the storm do damage for you. So there is a strategic element to using a storm in the world. Harpooning is a part of upgrading Edward and his gear. There are many different types of creatures to harpoon and they are all needed to get every single upgrade. This is one of the smaller harpooning targets. Just imagine taking on a great white shark or a blue whale. This one's dangerous. The harpooning activity itself has upgrades and you will need them to take on the bigger targets. You can upgrade the health of the rowboat, the number of harpoons you carry, and the damage of the harpoons themselves. We are going to move to a different location now. This is a smuggler cave. This one happened to be accessed from the underwater, but not all of them are. Here, we ran in without looking around, and this got us in a little bit of trouble. But it was only two guys, and we took one by surprise, so not too bad. Caves are heavy stealth locations. Stealth is key in this game. We've put a lot of effort in to make it a valuable and exciting gameplay for players. Since we came from the underwater, Edward does not have his weapons or guns. You will have to use your stealth tools to get through this. Here, we will utilize the whistle to take out the brute. Anytime an enemy is taken out, they will drop their weapon for you to use. Again, we are taking these guys by surprise and using their own weapons against them. Using just your fists keeps things quiet. 
This allows you to take advantage over the second guard. This specific enemy is what we call a frigate. Uh, frigates are the type of ships that you need to destroy as fast as you can because the longer the fight uh, lasts, the more damage they're capable of doing. We have other enemy types like the Charger or the Man of War. The Man of War is a massive ship capable of carrying over 100 cannons. These are ships that you really need to upgrade to be able to face. But now that this frigate has been demasted, we can start the boarding. Boarding, it's very important you are a pirate. This is how you gain cargo. This is how you take on ships. So here we can start the boarding from any orientation or angle we wish. The distance even matters. If you get too close, the two crews will just jump right into each other. If you start a bit further, you can jump in the water and go in for a sneak stealth attack. We have two objectives to accomplish for this boarding. We can take out the captain, and we need to take out some of his crew. So using the swivel gun, we will efficiently take out a lot of the crew. And now we'll go for the captain using Edward's navigation abilities. Here, again, using the new frame system, we have a dangerous enemy on the other side taking out our crew. We can easily take him out with a headshot. So what we see here is that two ships have come together to create this 3D environment where using your assassin abilities to navigate, to be stealthy, you can take the advantage and get the kill by surprise. Now that we've taken out the captain, we still need to take out a few of the crew members to complete this boarding. Now that we've plundered the ship, we're gonna gain that rum that we saw earlier, but we're also gonna gain an ammo and crew members and some gold. With every boarding, there's three options that you can do with that ship. You can gain crew members, you can send the ship to your fleet if you wish, or you can salvage a ship to repair the jackdaw if you took too much damage in the fight. In this case, since we did well, we're gonna send the ship to our fleet. These are real 18th century devices that pirates and sailors used to access the underwater. Underwater is how the golden age of piracy started. Through an incredible hurricane, tons and tons of Spanish gold was lost at the bottom of the seabed. This attracted poor, jobless sailors and pirates to dive down and grab this treasure. It was important for us to include the underwater as a new environment because it was so important to the history of piracy. The underwater is full of unknown dangers and predators. You do have to pay attention and act quick, but the risk is worth the prize as you need a lot of money to get all the upgrades for your ship, the Jackdaw. Stealth is very important, even in the underwater. Here, we can use the seaweed and plant life to keep yourself hidden from sharks and other dangers. This is an air barrel. It's a one-time air refill, so use them wisely. Of course, you can always go back to the diving bell to refill. So we've left Havana and reached our target's hideout. Here we can see that Ducasse is on that man of war off in the distance, so we'll have to go through this jungle to get to him. Jungles are places where we really push the immersion and the feel. With Next Gen, we're able to have a lot more physics on the plants, translucency through the foliage, better lighting, and much more dense environment. Now that we've reached the village where Ducasse's ship is docked, we want to remain undetected so that we can reach him. Here we have a new hide spot called the hiding door, good for taking out a guard and keeping his body hidden. You are a true assassin when height is in your favor. In every location, we've made access to rooftops easy. This, along with strong stealth rules and mechanics, are what fans have been looking for. We're showing off a new weapon, the blowpipe. Using berserk darts, you're able to manipulate and control the AI to attack his own allies, even animals, and Edward himself, if the player is not careful. As we go this way, we can see there's a lot of guards on the beach. We could go in and fight them if we wish to, but to show off that this is a mini open world, we're gonna try to find a different route to get to our objective. Here, we've seen a guard. We don't want to alert him. We don't want to alert the guards on the beach. So we're going to use our stealth ability to take him out silently. No te 
With AC3, we were able to push the navigation in the frontier, which means using natural environments like trees and rocks and so on. Mayan ruins are the perfect place where we mix man-made structures and these natural environments. So you really get to feel how far the navigation abilities of the assassin have come since the original game. In the distance there, we can see another part of the island being blocked off by a patrol of guards. We're going to avoid it for now and go for that treasure. It's important for us to be able to give the players new tools, specifically for stealth. In this case, we have the blowpipe. Using the berserk darts, you make your enemies go crazy. Effectively, this means that they'll attack anything and everything in sight, including their own friends, animals, or Edward if he was in the way. So you do have to be careful with how you use it. But now that we've caused a distraction, if we happen to fall down there, at least there's already a bit of damage done for us. But using the, our navigation skills, we're able to get past that area without any trouble. There in the distance, you can see the jackdaw placed exactly where you left it when you got onto this location. It's really important for us to show the beauty of this Caribbean world. The Caribbean has some amazing vistas, and we pushed ourselves to replicate this in the game. As we continue forward, we can see in the distance there, there's a couple prisoners that are taken hostage. This is a scenario that you need to use stealth. If you're detected by those guards, they will kill the hostages. So in this case, it's to your advantage to use the environment to figure out how you can take out those guards without being detected. In this case, it's two guards, so it's not too hard. There are other scenarios where you have more guards and you have to figure out how you can take all of them out at the same time. Now that we've freed these prisoners, they are more than happy to join our crew. This is just one way of gaining crew members. As mentioned earlier, there's the taverns. There's actually many different setups of gaining crew. Here, we're gonna go back to the treasure map. We can see that the treasure is actually behind the temple near a fountain. So if we just look around, we can see that it's uh, around here. Now that we've found the treasure, what we've actually found is a blueprint. Blueprints are incredibly valuable for the upgrading of the Jackdaw. This is how you can upgrade the biggest and most devastating upgrades of the ship. So here we're approaching a reach high point. Just like classic ACs, synchronizing with a reach high point reveals the contents of a location and the map itself. But as an added feature, because this game world is so huge, there are many different locations, this also becomes a fast travel point. So now you can, by synchronizing, now you can come back here anytime you wish to collect those treasures that we passed up a bit earlier. Havana is a Spanish-styled city. It was built as an homage to the cities from AC2. We love the roof running and the verticality of those cities, so Havana was built with that in mind. Cities are great places to find a lot of activities, shops, and ways of making money. We'll earn money by doing this contract and taking out a local Templar. This is a side activity and not one of the main assassinations. We have many of these, and it's a great way to earn cash. Climbing and free running is very important to the brand, as you can see. Havana has been built with this in mind. Lots of ways of getting on roofs and finding access to hidden areas. Now that we're near the target, using Eagle Vision will assess the situation. We can see some guards around. With these contracts, we can earn more money if we remain undetected. So let's take out the possible threats before going after our target. There are many opportunities to take him out. See if you can spot them all, but for now, there is an easy one in front of us with the explosive barrel. So we'll free aim and take him out that way. Since we were undetected, we also got that cash bonus. And now we escape the scene.
Now that we've escaped, we'll take a look at our map of Havana. As you can see, there's a lot of activities, missions, and collectibles. Lots for you to do, but for now, we'll head to a shop to upgrade Edward's guns. You can upgrade Edward to carry up to four pistols. But here, we are going to upgrade the guns themselves. Since we're after the weapons dealer, Julian Ducasse, we will upgrade to the most powerful pistols our money can get. And of course, there's a lot of customizations and upgrades you can get for Edward. 